Kia ora everybody and welcome to our short webinar about FTP for the PBRF. Uh, my name is Sharon Beattie. Um, we have a probably a fairly wide audience of people watching this. Some of you will be very familiar with FTP and some perhaps not. So I hope it does prove to be a useful resource for you anyway. Okay, so FTP, also known as File Transfer Protocol, um, it's a simple and secure way to transfer files, particularly large numbers or big files. You, you transfer them from your computer to your organization's secure area on our server. Um, to do this you need obviously an internet connection, an FTP client tool, an account name, username and password and you can get those from us by emailing us at pbrfhelp at tc.government.nz and you also need the URI which you'll find on page 25 of the IT user guide and that's on, our, on the submissions tab of our information site. Okay, so just a brief overview of what you'll see when you do get FTP connected. Um, you'll see three areas <coughs> uh, or folders. You'll see one, one that's called Evidence Portfolios, that's where the XML files go. <coughs> um, one called NROs, and that's obviously where all the NRO files go, all, of, all, the, all the different kinds. And the third area is for PDFs. Now that is not the, anything that you put PDFs into, but this is an, <coughs> an area where the system generates overnight Cop, um, PDF copies of your EPs, you are then able to go on and download those PDFs from that folder. Just an important note as well, so when you go on to FTP, you, all you will see is and have is access to your TEO's own file areas. You don't get any access or any, any um, ability to look at any other obviously TEO files or folder, folder locations. Okay, so um, the client tool, we recommend FileZilla. Um, it's free, it's popular, reliable, works for Windows, Mac, Linux, and you can get it here, uh, FileZilla-project.org. If you already have a compatible client tool, that's also fine. But we'll just be talking you through the FileZilla in this instance. Okay, so here we go to the site there and download it. So um, now just as when we go when we go on to connect I'll just go through what we're going to do which is to go to the site manager button, click the file, open the site manager, click on the new site and give it a name. You only have to do that once. You want, the next time you go on to FTP after there after this it will already be there. And then you need to enter your settings. <coughs> Now those settings are also um, outlined on page 25 of the IT system user guide. So they're all there, the host, the port, the protocol and so on. And then you're going to cl click the connect button and it should all work. So let's, we're going to go through that now. Okay, so I've, I've downloaded FileZilla, I'm going into file and I choose site manager. I go down to the bottom and I select new site <clears throat> and then I give my site a name and you can call it anything you like. Yeah. On the right there as you'll see I've put in my parameters the host, the protocol uh, and my login obviously and my username password and then I'm going to click connect. You may get this message <clears throat> um, unknown certificate. In this case, if you do, it'll, it'll depend on your, I guess, your settings, firewalls, and so on. <clears throat> Just go down to the bottom and and tick always trust the certificate in future sessions. Click OK, and that should make it go away. Okay. If you have a look uh, while you're connecting, at the top left there, you see some status logs, um, logged in, connection established, logged in, retrieving directory listing and so on. So that just tells you what's going on in the background. Okay, on the right there, as you, as I just said, you see those three areas for evidence portfolios, NRO files and PDFs. So essentially with FTP, our screen is split. On the left hand side, that's 
that's your computer, or in this case my computer. <coughs> on the right is, is the FTP <coughs> area on our server for you. I'm sorry, I just missed one. Okay, uploading NRO files. Okay, so obviously there are many types of um, NRO files that the system accepts. If you, if you want to have a closer look at what's allowed and what's acceptable, go to the, the EP schema definition document, also found on our information site under submitting data, that tab. <coughs> okay, NRO file names, they do have a 255 character limit. You can choose the names. <coughs> um, ensure that your file names are unique across your um, uploaded EPs to prevent any accidental overwriting of NRO files. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Okay, so I'm just going to transfer something over now. Um, it's essentially it's a click and drag. So I'm, I'm just going into the folder where my files are. I'm clicking on it just like you normally would. Uh, I've got some files there I want to take across. And then it's just a case of clicking and dragging them over into your NRO file area on the FTP server. Just like that. <coughs> Okay, while this is happening, depending on how much you're bringing across, sometimes it happens very quickly if there's only a few things. If you have a look down the bottom here, you'll see um, in, the, in the log what's happening, how far through it is, and you also see below it here, successful. We've got a queued file here, and we've got two successful so far. There's also one, a log if, if one has failed. <coughs> Okay, and as you can see there, three have come across successfully. At the same time, it's happening, the log, you'll see the log up at the top of the screen as well. Okay, and there's our three, successful. Okay, now to go and if you want to have a look and just to make sure at the other end, you would log into the system now, <coughs> at the PBRF IT system, and go into your validation logs and check their view log. And there is the we log entry there. The file check was successful, the file, and so on. So it's gone in. <coughs> so that's NRO files. So it's just it's just dragging them across from your half of the screen to the right hand side of the screen into the NRO folder. Okay, so XML files, it's the same, exactly the same principle, only this time you're putting your XMLs up into the EP folder. Okay, so just a word about things to know about, or several things to be aware of and think about with um, XML uploads. <coughs> um, EP file names, they'll be unique for a TEO. <coughs> Um, XML files, it could be one or could be multiple, obviously. We're, um, the naming convention, we, rec we recommend, you don't have to, but this is the naming convention that we recommend putting a provider name and then a date and then a sequence number depending on how many files that you were uploading on the same day. And then obviously the extension of .xml. <coughs> so here's an example. It looks rather long, but this is really essentially showing you that <coughs> this is the provider provider name seven zero zero one, and here's the date, <coughs> and it was created, and it, um, and that was the first one created because it defaults to zero. Okay. Um, <coughs> An XML file will be overwritten if the file already exists on the FTP location and it hasn't and it hasn't yet been processed, and it will be rejected if the previous file has been processed. So I'll just say that again: an XML XML file will be overwritten if the file already exists on the FTP location, but it hasn't yet been processed, and it will be rejected if the previous file has been processed. Okay, 
Um, just something else to know, submitting XML files triggers processing and validation. Um, so for the NROs associated with the EP and therefore you need to make sure that you you upload the NRO files associated with the EP before you submit the XMLs. So what I'm saying is once, it, once the system sees the XML it goes out, processes it, it starts looking for everything that belongs in there. <coughs> um, and again, and I think, uh, yes, I, that's what I just said, an XML file will be overwritten if, if it already exists. <coughs> okay. So correcting or <coughs> updating an EP that's already in the system. Um, to see more about editing EPs created using XML, see the section in the IT system user guide. Um, if your EP file contains, if, sorry, if your XML file contains an EP that's already in the system, that, that EP will overwrite the old one. Okay, <clears throat> now um, as I said before, this is a new feature in the system this round. It wasn't available last time. <coughs> so overnight, the system will go and create PDF copies of all EPs that you've loaded up into that folder. You can then go in and drag those off. You can do it in bulk. So um, I'll just, so essentially you would go in there and it's the same principle but you're just dragging the other way this time. And here's an example of one that we, we put in. So it's just the first page. As you can see it's a nine page document so I won't show you all of it but it's, it's a PDF copy of the EP. Okay, so just a little bit of troubleshooting. <clears throat> um, having problems connecting, what's the what could it be? Right, well, I guess starting with the basics, you might have entered an incorrect username or password. So just check trans uh, the, the logs. So if you see a 530 error, that is probably that. <clears throat> um, you might have selected the wrong protocol, so make sure that you have not um, selected the uh, secure or FTP over SSL as the connection protocols. Uh, it's possible that your firewall may be blocking um, the connection. So you do need to have port 21 open and ports 54,055999 for secure FTP. Uh, it sounds a little bit co complicated. Um, some of you will know exactly what that means and or for others of you that might be gobbledygook. So you really need to talk to your IT people about this. <coughs> okay, so and just <coughs> by way, <coughs> excuse me, if it, if it is impossible for you to have those ports open for secure FTP, then you can use a plain FTP. So uh, this is um, mentioned in the IT user guide as well. So what you would do then is you would put the word unsecured and then a pipe in front of your username. So look, here's my example. So unsecured pipe TO-1234 and then you're using plain FTP. Um, so this means the connection is not encrypted. So you do, it, it's poss it is possible to do it, but you do this at your discretion. Well, that's it really. Um, as I said, this was just a short guide to using FTP. Um, pretty much everything we've said here is available for you in the IT system user guide. And there's extra information, of course, in the EP schema definition. Both of those are available on our information site and under the tab submitting your data. Um, if you get stuck and you need assistance, you can also email us at pbrfhelp.tc.government. NZ and we're happy to assist where we can. <clears throat> so thank you very much everybody. I hope this has been useful and um, happy FTPing. Ka kite ano.